Hello everyone, I am Eric, amateur radio operator KJ4YZI. You're watching Ham Radio Concepts. Hopefully you're a subscriber. Hopefully before you leave this video, you click the subscribe button. You see stuff like this that you learn on and that could actually help you save money. Now check this out, two years ago this week, I quit my career at AT&T and DirecTV and moved on to a better career involving radio that I'm a lot more happy with. But two years ago when I quit DirecTV AT&T, I decided to make that video, the complete documentary on how to cut the cord, how to go free over the air HDTV antenna, and how to save money and put it back in your pocket. Guys, I, ex I installed those services for seven years. How many houses did I go in and people said, I can't really afford this. Is there anything you can do to lower my price? Or I can't believe I'm doing this. I watch five channels and I'm about to pay 150 a month as I install their service. You know, there's people that can't afford it, there's people that got to have History Channel, and then there's the people that watch, you know, news, and they have, there's some good shows on Antenna TV. It's all in high definition, most of it. And with the repack lately, there's a lot more channels that are being added to different transmitter sites and more programming. If you can't find it on Antenna, you can find it on an uh, Amazon Fire Stick. But what I have here is Episode two here, I'm setting up my grandmother. You know, with COVID-19 and coronavirus in these days, my video, two years now, my video was 5,000 views a day. And people are watching it and saying, wow, I got laid off. I don't have the money to pay anymore. How do I get Antenna TV? And they've stumbled upon my first video. The link is in the description. And they've learned on how to cut the cord and in that video I explain coax cable differences and power amplifiers and how to get your signal optimum. But in this video, I'm at my grandmother's house, I'm up on the roof. I purchased the same DB8E antenna from antennasdirect.com. That's where I purchased mine. Two years ago, it's still the best antenna I've ever had. At my house, I get about 94 channels. My grandmother here, I installed a push-up pole here and I'll show you about that in a second. I decided to pick up an additional antenna that I don't have. This is the Clearstream 5 from Antennas Direct. My grandmother said, I gotta have my NBC, my West 2 News. Okay, so this is UHF up here, DB8E, a eight bay bow tie UHF style antenna. And then this is a VHF style. Both are directional, this way, okay? And this one uh, I've never used before, but I'll show you about assembling it real quick and we'll see, will it pick up the VHF frequencies or VHF stations? There are still stations on VHF even with the repack. Sometimes you gotta get a whole antenna like this just to pick up those two or three VHF stations, but in her situation, it's worth it because she wants those channels. And my lovely grandmother here, hello, Nanny. Hi. And she wants, are you tired of paying the direct TV bill? Yes, I am. And, and tell, tell them who your favorite grandson is. Oh, my favorite grandson is you, sweetheart. And I'm the only grandson she has. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna see what we get. I'll explain to you what I got here real quick and show you uh, some of the things. Maybe you get an idea. I encourage you though, if you want to learn all about it and you're new, go to look at my first video and see about how I installed uh, at my friend's house and got him on Antenna TV. And since then, a couple things that have been added, like the Antenna Point app created by AntennasDirect.com on your phone. You could use it to point and find which transmitters are in what distance from you and what direction and what kind of antenna you'll need to find it. As well as, how the VHF works, and an update on channel scan so you can see what a channel scan does and why you should do it with the new antenna repack changing frequencies. Now I'll show you what she had that I have to take down. That's what you get right there. I know a lot of people watching would be pissed if this is what they had. <laughs> I would be. Uh, I knew this was up here like this, but at the time there was, there was no way to really get a wire. There's really no attic on this house the way my grandfather built it. I got to get one underneath the house up through the floor. But hey, at least the DirecTV coax that they use handled with the sun a couple of years. That's coming off. All right, so I'm going to put this antenna together. This is the same DB8E I have. Um, again, another thing in this video I didn't show you last time, a couple years ago in a video, was the, uh, the app that you can use on your phone from Antennas Direct that they made in order to get you to point this in the right direction. So you're pointing it for the maximum signal. Now this antenna, as I said, is UHF only. And then uh, I'm facing both of these towards Orlando from uh, Mico, Florida. And uh, got the cable it comes with here. I should be able to get this up in 
probably within an hour. So the one thing to reiterate, and again, this is a little bit updated since my previous video a couple years ago, Antennas Direct puts a lot of, you know, quick start literature. They have a lot of, um, you know, this is the quick start book here, uh, but they have some other things in here, you know, on the VHF retrofit kit, also the app and stuff like that. Kind of, they, they don't give you this stuff and expect you to be an expert or to get frustrated. And again, it says call to learn, don't return. They have their own helpline. They have their own team that will tell you how to scan for channels, uh, which way to face it if you're unable to get it on the app and stuff. They will help you. They, they have a whole team of tech support that will help you with this. So they didn't just sell an antenna and tell you to figure it out. That's one good thing. You know, I always assume people know as much as I do, but some people don't. And if you're willing to learn and you want to make the change, Antennas Direct has their own helpline. So check them out on the website. And it's in the description in the video. So let's take a look at the antenna in its completed form here. This is what I would expect because I already have one. It took me about 35 minutes to screw the bolts together with the wind and the papers blown around. Look at this here. So we do have, you know, the, it comes with the little jumpers from the combiner in the middle there. And uh, they do have, you know, good crimped on coax fittings here with the weather tight seal boots. Okay. This box here has the little weather strip on the bottom, keep the moisture out. So far on mine, there is zero moisture in that combiner box. I mean, you open it up, it's like brand new in there. Now this antenna doesn't look too terribly complicated. Um, again, this is, they say up to 65 mile range on this antenna. And that's, you know, any antenna you get is gonna be good for 60 to 70 miles because when they say on eBay and Amazon, you know, 175 miles, totally wrong. The curvature of the earth plus the line of sight for you ham radio operators that follow me, you know that it can happen with certain band conditions or atmospheric conditions or propagation. But the average uh, TV, you know, signal antenna really isn't no more than 70 miles that you can pick up from the transmitter. So basically we have a driven element. This is basically your antenna and then you're gonna have the reflector behind it. And again, the reason I wanted this on top of the um, DB8E is because she really wants West 2. And another fun fact about her location versus mine. Uh, I'm about six miles north of her, but I go for um, Orlando stations as well and West Palm. She's six miles uh, north of me. I'm south of her. She's closer to Orlando, but I have a little more of a problem. And the reason is right north of her house is like the largest uh, manufactured or mobile home park, trailer park, whatever you want to call it. Barefoot Bay, and I know people know where Barefoot Bay is. It's like 12 miles wide. It's all metal buildings in the way. So I'm thinking that has a lot to do with the signal facing through Barefoot Bay and all the metal that could be interfering, I'm guessing. You're talking miles and miles of metal and aluminum. So that may be a problem. That's why I am trying to get the best out of this signal. So I'm gonna put this together. It only looks like there's, you know, not much to it. I mean, there's a, a couple bolts here, a couple wing nuts, and that's it. This is pretty easy to put together though, only about 10 minutes. Just the four spacers between the element in the front and the reflector. You just screw them in with a screw and washer. I mean, the spacers fit right into the holes. One, two, three. I don't see why that could be any easier, or how that could be any easier. Of course, if I didn't mention, this is the front. For those who are non-antenna technical, the reflector, everything comes into the front here and it bounces off the reflector. So this is directional. That way is the way it'd be pointing. Now the Clearstream 5 is also uh, gonna be facing in the same general direction for VHF, primarily just for Orlando. And uh, so the, the combiner, taking the antenna up here, running it out, I'm gonna run another combiner to combine, uh, which would be called a duplexer or a combiner. VHF on here, UH on here, uh, UHF on top combined to one output to the splitter, which is around the corner here. So before I put this wiring back together and neaten it up, this is the four port um, distribution amplifier. See the power light on there? And I'm using this line right here is going to where they used to have a TV under the bar room. They used to have a TV underneath. So there's just an empty coax lay on there that comes right out here. And I'm using that connected to the outlet with the power inserter to uh, feed power out here to the splitter and uh, we're gonna see if this does a difference because I know without this uh, Channel 9 and channel 6 were barely coming in 
So as I was doing my testing, so we're gonna find out if that makes a difference or not. But again, you wanna use, you know, uh, good quality crimps on here. Um, these are compression fittings here, but I don't have my tool with me. See, this is a, a you know, Radio Shack piece. That's a little too long and I'm gonna redo that. But for now I got, you know, TV on there. And cover your connectors up on the ports so you don't get moisture in there. And if you have 75 ohm terminators to terminate the unused lines, that'll keep reflections and lost signal into the amp instead of having it, you know, lost somewhere else. All right, let's check out the Antenna Point app here. This is really a good app for those who wanna see where your transmitters are. So you can go when you first start the app, it'll give you some ideas and basics and functions on the app. We're gonna go here to got it. Now it's gonna load up by my GPS location and my phone location, and you can see it shows me which way I'm pointing and where the, the you know uh, near or distant transmitters would be. Now, if you're looking at the circle here, the, the circle in the middle represents pretty much obtainable, probably with a really modest antenna, something very, very small or just, you know, standard. Then the yellow circle would indicate stations that are a little bit farther away that you would need just a little bit of a better antenna. And then the red would be fringe. That's like the edge there. Outside of the red, your you know, red ring, you're pretty much not getting anything. And what you can see is the stations here are what I'm after right there. They're on the fringe area between Orlando, Kissimmee, you know, right there. There are some down south in West Palm, but I, it says I'm not close enough to get them in West Palm. Red would indicate 60 miles, yellow 50, the gray 35. So I'll use the phone and I'll, you know, align the phone with my antenna, okay? So the antenna is going to be basically pointed in that direction. Actually, what I'm probably gonna do is point it here like this, okay? And then I'll, you know, face one section of the DB a, just a few degrees to the left and one of the few degrees to the right, try to cover that whole area right there. Uh, also in here, it'll tell you towers and channels right here. Uh, the local towers, the range, you know, how far it is from you. The call sign, now see, look, VHF, okay? Tells you the channels, that's channel 10. Uh, and then if you go through, it'll show you, you know, 50 mile radius on UHF. It's got all the stations that are in your area here on the app and it'll tell you you know, uh, what kind of signal you're looking at. So. so now that I have my antenna set up and connected to the TVs and all that, I need to do a channel scan on each one of the TVs and that's going to search through all the frequencies and see which channels I can receive and which ones are coming in. Now, real quick, a learning thing, and this is what's good about Antennas Direct. Again, I can't answer thousands of comments a month that are going on that previous video. And I can't answer thousands on this one, but I could teach you or point you in the right direction like this website. And this is another reason why I may know a lot of the stuff on this site and about these products, you may not. Their learning center has uh, a lot of information here about this, but we'll go to TV station channel moves real quick on the Antennas Direct website. Now to explain to you briefly here that, you know, there's over a thousand TV stations must move frequencies to make room for wireless services between 2018 and 2020. Now I know at my career there, I've talked to some tower climbers and they are going around the country and they're making big money, these companies to climb these towers at these TV stations and change out antennas and to adjust feed lines and all kinds of stuff to change frequencies, you know, from high UHF to low UHF or wherever. They need to change and adjust their transmitters and all that. You don't have to buy anything and you don't have to replace your antennas. You just need to go into your menu and do a channel scan. Have you seen a couple of your channels recently that disappeared? That's probably because they moved frequency, never said anything. By law, I think it was supposed to be they had to warn you 30 days prior with a ticker on the bottom that says this channel is being reassigned you need to do a uh, rescan on your tv to continue watching but i haven't seen too much of that so if you haven't scanned your channels in a year you need to do that after you watch this video because a lot of these frequencies may have not existed the last time you did that a year ago and you know you may uh keep your channels but get new ones now so this is just in a nutshell what the, they call the repack the channel repack some of the channel numbers are changing um, you know, uh, the virtual channel stays the same, but the RF channel change is different. Now, that's uh, one thing that's good on their learning center. They have some other stuff here, but I'll show you the uh, FCC guide on the FCC information you know, website here. The links are all in the description. It'll show you here uh, some reception maps also. So you can see what the channel changed to after the repack um, based on zip code or go to my location. 
you know, I'd rather use the Antenna Point app and the locator on the Antennas Direct website. But this gives you an idea of, you know, where those would be. And look, the RF channel is 48. The repack channel is now 14. The repacking dates are expected from um, October, you know, uh, or was that October 19th to January 17th. So that should already be done. You see, so that's uh, some more information about doing a channel scan. And every TV, it's a different scan. Uh, I've walked through a lot of those at AT&T, so I know a lot of the different TVs, but it's very simple. You know, in the menu somewhere, you go to, you know, channels and auto program is usually what it says, and give it 20 minutes and see what happens. There is NBC right there. That's the one channel that I added that Clearstream 5 for. And uh, so far, right there, that means we're getting that channel. So right there, that was a proven, you know, it is working. Let's go up to, to me TV, right? Six, what's the signal level on six now with the booster? Let me see here, info. Just over half, okay? So without the booster, it was somewhere like here. She'd call me and she'd say, when I put the antenna up uh, just the DBAD before, and I said, you know, what's going on? Well, six is flaky. You know, and you have multiple channel sixes. Let's see what nine is. What's the signal on nine? Nine is in Orlando as well. Yeah, look, the booster is definitely making a difference. That is good. I'll show you my favorite channel. It's 27.2. Right here. Love this channel. It's got all the old stuff, man. Columbo. I don't really watch the Partridge family, but I'd rather watch that than what's coming on. Today's day and age, you know, a bunch of garbage. But Sanford and Sons, all in the family. Love it. Telemundo. Univision, if that's how you say it. So my grandmother also watches uh, 56. She likes her Ion. She watches her Blue Bloods, you know, her Criminal Minds, all that stuff. She's got two Ion channels. She also got her HSN, QVC, shop and all that. Hopefully she's going to go buying stuff on the TV. But definitely the Clearstream 5 did give us the WESH 2 for VHF. So that was a 100% uh, uh, success right there to add that. So here's my DB8E here. And again, I have one south, one north. The combiner for VHF, UHF. And that on the bottom is the Clearstream Fusion which is a VHF UHF panel mount that I have facing south for the NBC channel two, no channel five, south and West Palm. So that's, I'm only using that for VHF. Overall though, it's been solid and uh, I'm continuing to use it. Sa hell, I've saved thousands of dollars already. Idea behind this video is the fact that, you know, for those who want to save the money, for those who don't have the money, uh, there is a way. And uh, if you can't find it on Antenna TV, you can find it on Amazon or Netflix, whatever. But uh, there is definitely interest, and you can't argue the fact that there is interest because I'm having probably 100 comments a day and about 5,000 views a day. So people are interested. And for those who say, well, you know, I don't get my history channel. I mean, I've read a lot of comments about people that say it's all garbage programming. But the fact is I don't watch much TV. I'm watching YouTube. So... Um, you know, it's just to get the local news, to get some other shows, something to do. Uh, if you're a TV junkie, maybe it's not for you. But I hope you enjoyed at least the effort I put into this video. Check out AntennasDirect.com. Um, I'm a firm believer of their stuff. And uh, you can make your own antenna. You can buy them. But just don't go buy in the Amazon Chinese 150-mile range antenna. That's really not going to get you better than 30 miles. 7-3, everyone. This is KJ4YZI.